And we are live. Hi, everyone. All right. Linda, you want to say hello? <laughs> I do. I think I just had something uh, playing there in the background. So. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everybody. Linda Halloran with Town & Country Federal Credit Union and glad that you're all here. K-Squad members and Town & Country Federal Credit Union members joining us tonight for the third session about budgeting, getting our arms around our budget in 2023 and, and making it something that works for us to help us reach our goals and live stress-free, less stressful lives. So Kate's going to um, jump in right away. And please be sure to, you know, comment in the chat and, um, you know, share. She's got a lot to cover tonight. So I'm glad you're all here. Thank you, Linda. Welcome, everyone. I'm so happy. This is budget class number three. If you missed the other ones, you can jump back in another time, but don't go anywhere. We're going to get right into it. All right. So tonight is our last one hour session. We've got three more half hour sessions in April, May, and June. So make sure to stick around. But tonight, of course, we're going to go over our budget because every single month, if you are budgeting the way that I am, I am assisting with helping you budget is we do a unique monthly budget. Every single month, we do a zero base budget, which means our income minus our expenses equals zero which means we assign every single dollar a name. And for me, back when I started several years ago, this has been very effective and it has helped me, you know, reach a, a lot of financial milestones that I've been very excited about over the years. And I'm so glad to share it with you. I want to also be listening to your success stories tonight. If you saw the description, it says we'll go over our successes and identify places we need to work on going forward this year. And on that note, hi, everyone. I can see you all in the chat. I'm so happy to see you. If you're from town and country, can you just say here from town and country? If you are a K-Squad member, say K-Squad here. And if you're both, say, hey, both, um, you know, wh wh where are you coming from? We're so excited to see you. All right. So I got a message from a viewer, and we're going to start right off with that. So this is what she said. She said, I struggle with keeping track of the budget. I write our expenses at the beginning of the month for the first three days of the month. I write diligently what I buy in respective amounts. Afterwards, I forget what happens. I get busy, tired, sick, et cetera. And I remember to track the expenses at the end of the month when I say it to myself, is it even worth to, uh, to track it at this point in the month? And the next thing she knows, the month starts over. Can anyone relate to that? You, you have the best of intentions. Like we had the best of intentions to hit the gym, right? At the beginning of the year, right? And we're going to eat healthy and we're going to go for a walk every day or whatever our thing were. And then as the year starts, and we're only in March it starts to taper off. So <laughs> Julie says, yes, amen. Okay, so this is a possible solution. We're gonna get right into it. One of the things that I highly suggest that has worked for me is habit pairing. And if you are a subscriber of my channel, you might've heard about this a, a little bit. We've talked about this before because I have read the book Atomic Habits and The Slight Edge. I've left those in the description if you want to dive deeper into those, because they are very, very useful, very informative books. So what I do is I habit pair. Many of you know, the pairing that I do is I love my morning coffee. I look forward to my coffee. Hey, town and country. Um, but I look forward to that and I look at my budget at the same time. The, the mere smell of coffee makes me think about my budget because I've paired them up. And I'm what it is, is the key is pairing something you have to do 
was something you get to do. I get to drink coffee. I love my coffee. And while I'm drinking it, I check my account. Now, you know I do this daily, but that's not necessary. You don't have to do it daily, but I do definitely recommend at least weekly. Um, you could do it on Saturday mornings when you're doing, when you throw your laundry in, whatever it is, but pair things together. Here's another pair. Um, thank you, Hope. I see you. Thank you so much from Under the Median. Hi. Another example of this is say you hate folding laundry. I'm going to use this like applicable in real world besides budgeting. You hate folding laundry. Get all your clean laundry out on your bed. Turn on your favorite YouTuber and watch their latest video or watch a show on Netflix. Like do something you love while you do the thing you have to do to make it more enjoyable. Uh, you hate doing the dishes? Listen to a podcast while you're doing it. You hate exercising, but you love reading? Listen to an audio book while you go for a walk. Uh, the, the habit pairing is, is a thing that I think is very useful and has helped me do the thing that at first wasn't so desirable, pleasurable, but now I really look forward to it. You guys know that I love to budget. So take out your budgets, guys. What we're going to do next. So we, I just want to like address that question first. Next, of course, the most important part is we want to adjust our budgets. So I'm going to go through a few things. I'm seeing everyone in the comments. I'm, I want to I want to say hi to everybody. Oh, my goodness. Look at everybody. Hi, hi, hi. This is wonderful. Hi, everyone. All right. Take out your budgets. The first topic that we always do is household. Household is your essentials. It's the thing that if you lost your job tomorrow, if you ended up in the hospital tomorrow, knock on wood, none of that happens. You know what you owe to just run your household, to just live, okay? So for example, some of the things in there, and again, this is repetitive, okay? It's repetitive. This whole thing is not going to be repetitive though, because I'm also going to be sharing some practical tips as we go, because I know some of you are old hat at this, but for our beginners, I don't want you to feel like you have to rush through and I don't want you to feel like you missed something. So I'm gonna have a little something, hopefully for everyone as we go. All right, so the first thing is your mortgage. Like that did not change for me. If you are a Mainer, did you get your relief check? I got my relief check the other day. I was thrilled. And um, my heat bill, my oil was $447. And the relief check that the Mainers got, the people that got the checks um, that were eligible, it was $450. So that was so exciting. Like my whole one heating bill was wiped out. It was paid for. Is anybody else in Maine and got that? Okay, so the next thing, you gotta make sure if you have homeowners or renters insurance, HOA fees if you have them, a big one, of course, that is necessary for some of you working parents or whatever your circumstances. If you have children, you've got daycare, groceries. Um, for me, groceries are in the household and these are just your basic groceries because no matter what happens, you need to eat. If you have pets, pets need to eat. I've got kitty cats, we need the litter utilities. Make sure you are accounting for your water, your electricity. In my case, uh, like I said, I live in Maine and we have heavy snow. I actually do pay for snow removal. Some of you like to shovel. Some of you have a snow blower. I don't have either. Oh, I do have I do have a shovel, but I don't have the snow blower. Uh, so I, I do hire someone to do that. Plus uh, with my all my jobs and my son, it's it's a it's a choice I've had to make. Um, health insurance, medical appointments, co-pays, et cetera. These are all the things, again, that are essential. 
you have any prescribed or over-the-counter medications that you get every single month? Make sure to include those. While we're going through all these, just be keeping in mind, you can either be changing it as we're going or write a note like, oh, I need to add that or I don't have any medications this month. I can subtract that, whatever you've got going on. If you have a car payment, this is, you know, transportation is essential. If you get to the point eventually where you don't have a car payment, awesome. Gas, we need gas for the car. Vehicle maintenance, if something goes wrong, I consider this part of the household because this is essential. You have to have it. Let me check the comments really quick. Donna says, my winter bills are running around 120 a month in Indiana. Hey, Helter Skelter, pet food has gone up in price here. Yes. Candace, I have a bare bones budget. Bills created up and up. I cannot cut anything else or I lower anything else. Ugh, Candace, it's rough, right? Doing a good job. At least you know, Town and Country says, indeed, at least you know what you've got going on, you know? You show yes. And the answer, yes, you should move to Maine, but that's just for selfish reasons. Okay. Car registration and or inspections, if it's your month to do that, that's the thing about this unique monthly budget. That's not going to be every month. Uh, that's going to be hopefully once a year. So you want to make sure that you have that for the month. If it's, if it's in March, you're planning for that in the month of March. You might not have that the rest of the year. But that's my my big problem with a set it and forget it budget. It changes. And I like to be prepared for each month I'm going into. Then it doesn't feel so monotonous. It doesn't feel like it's always the same either. You can ramp up. You can ramp down. It's, it's a beautiful thing. And that is another thing I want you to learn. If you're needing help with your budget, I'm in it, you guys. I can't picture myself like kneading dough. Sorry, cat scratch here. I've got three cats. Um, I, I like to be in it. I'm very active in my budget. I do not set it and forget it. Every month, something new, something different. Water, sewer, garbage, etc. Internet, your girl needs internet. Uh, and obviously, all of you do because you're here with me right now. Your cell phone or landline. I don't have a landline, but cell phone. And the other thing that you want to include in this, because if you are in debt, you have credit card debt, you have student loans, you have a personal debt, whatever it is, like if you owe people money, you're going to owe at least the minimum payment if it hits the fan. So that is always included in the household, but we'll talk about this Um well, let's talk about it now. I'm not, let's not talk about it later. Let's talk about it now. The less debt you have, the less you're going to have to fork over for your household. And I know that's way easier said than done, but that's the point of this whole thing, right? We're going to get rid of that debt in time. All right. Do we have any questions? I'm just seeing if I see anything that stood out really quick. Hi, everyone. I'm so, I'm so happy to see you all. All right. Something that I want to mention is uh, there's this quote by Benjamin Franklin says, diligence is the mother of good luck. Diligence, as we know, is having or showing care in one's work. So with that quote, it's not luck that helps us achieve our goals, but diligence. This means that if you work carefully and consistently, you'll be far more likely to be successful as if luck had come your way, but it's not luck, you guys. And I love this topic because I think we could all benefit benefit from being from doing our due diligence in the areas of our lives that we prioritize. And in this case tonight, and this first whole half of the year, we are being diligent about our finances. And the, the more intentional we are and deliberate in our actions, 
the better our budgets are going to work out, which leads me to, I did a video called seven practical tips to reduce your cost of living. So as we go, I'm going to in infuse these tips. So we just went over the household, right? We just went over household because that's our, our bread and butter of our budget. But the first tip for reducing your cost of living is to take the best care of yourself that you can. I had a little thing. Here we go. Take great care of yourself. And normally I'm all about subtracting things and reducing, but if you're trying to take good care of yourself, I'm going to offer that you add a few things in in seemingly insignificant ways. For example, uh, a cup of water, an extra cup of water, drinking extra water every day, one extra serving of fruit or vegetables, whatever you're not getting enough of, a 10 minute walk during your break. Um, you have to take care of yourself. And I find that when we're talking about budgeting, medical bills come up. And some things are inevitable. Of course, my friends, some things are inevitable. But the better care you take of yourself, the more you make those maintenance appointments, ladies, all your female appointments that you need to make, guys too, all those important appointments that we kind of put off, we wait for another time. If you take the best care of yourself, that is going to help with your budget because you're going to have less medical bills. You're going to have less medications you have. You're not going to have the high blood pressure. You're not going to have the blood thinner. Like all, the, all the things that like, if you took even a little bit better care, you might reduce the medical bills. You might reduce that. Linda says, take care of the golden goose, you, or you won't be getting those golden eggs. <laughs> yeah, you, you've got to take care of yourself. So that's a huge one. Thank you, Mary Jo. She says, absolutely great point. Take care of yourself. So let's move on to actually the second tip while we're at it. If you're going to take better care of yourself, number two is to take better care of your stuff. If you're going to welcome in new inventory into your home, it costs you time, money, and energy to maintain these things. So if you're going to make the investment, you're going to put your money toward the things. When you make a purchase, that's yours now. Be diligent with the maintenance of that item. Be it your house, your car, electronics, Sunglasses. How many people have just sat on their sunglasses in the car? Raise your hand. We've all done it. Breaking your screen on your phone, losing things, looking for stuff in the lost and found because you're in hot mess mode. You don't know where things went. Be more mindful. Be more present. Less in a hurry so that you can take care of your things so those things don't end up costing you more money unexpectedly. JM Sunflower Girl says, um, less sick days from work too. Cleaning Fairy says, don't forget dental visits. I actually have a dentist appointment on Monday. Yes. Number three, we're recapping here, right? Take better care of yourself. Take better care of your stuff. And then while we're at it, while you're buying the stuff, buy quality whenever possible. In our community, K-Squad, we talk about quantity not being, uh, not quantity, excuse me. The quality being of the utmost importance, sometimes even above price, because if we buy cheap things, we have to buy those things over again, or they don't work as well as something if we just bought a little bit better quality. 
So um, more effective, less hassle, saves you money in the long run with less replacements. And then of course, when you're buying those things, wait for them to go on sale. So it's like a two, two part there. Thank you, everyone. Moving on to back to our budget. Let's talk about savings. Savings to me, I call future Kate, is the category household. You have to know what the basics cost. But my feeling is the more you save especially remember last week we talked about having a budget buffer, which is about a month of expenses in your checking at all times. So uh, if your monthly expenses are $2,000, you always keep $2,000 in your checking at all times. So if you have $2,000 in your checking, it's almost like you have zero because you're just, you're, you want to build that and make sure that you get that buffer in case you do a double mortgage payment like I have done in the past. Um, but when you're saving, you want to make sure you're thinking about your savings for the things that are important to you, but you also don't want to forget about retirement. Retirement, a couple options could be your 401k if your work provides that. If they offer a match, I can't shout it from the rooftops high enough. Try to invest up to the match. If they're going to match up to 4%, try to contribute 4% because then you're getting literally free money. Okay. So if you have not looked into that and you have a full-time job, call HR tomorrow. Check it out. When I worked in um, one of my jobs before, I had a 403B for a nonprofit. Now I currently contribute to Maine State Retirement. And the one that I want you all again to hear loud and clear, should you not have a full-time job elsewhere, if you have earned income in any way, do the Roth IRA. I do mine through Fidelity, but there are many options for that. My son as soon as he has earned income, there's some other loopholes you can do when they're younger, but I'm not going to get into that. But like, as soon as someone has earned income, you can contribute to uh, a Roth IRA. Roth IRA, there's a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA. You're going to have to do your research to decide which one you think is the most appropriate. I follow a lot of Dave Ramsey information. And what I came up with was the Roth IRA seemed to be the most appropriate for my goals. So I did that. Beyond the budget buffer, your savings for your emergency fund. Three to six months, three to six months expenses is uh, like a typical one. And I can't remember if I talked about this last week, but uh, some people like to do closer to 12, but I have like a semi not thinking that's the best idea in some cases because then you have a lot of money sitting there doing nothing unless you're like in a high interest savings, um, et cetera. But just if you are into investing or you haven't gotten into investing yet, just consider how much do you really need to be safe? But three to six, heck yes. On board, fully excited about that. Oh, happy birthday, Sue. Your emergency fund will give you peace of mind. It has done me wonders and slowly but surely putting that away. That's another reason why I'm always saying live below your means. Find out what your household is. We should know this by now. If we've been here for if this is session three, you should know your expenses are X, like your fixed non-negotiables. This is what I need to survive. And then depending on how much you want to save, you make that a priority. I want to save a ton. I'm always into saving. Um, I told some of you, I don't know if I said this in my last video, but I am having to replace my deck this year. That's quite an investment, you guys. 
Um, and so I'm going to be saving for that. And uh, could you guys just let me know in the comments super quick, what is your savings motivation? What are you saving for? What if you get this together and you put this budget into place and you consistently do it all year long? What are we saving for? Thank you, Lou. Lou says you have really motivated me to save. That is the goal. <laughs> In many other things. I hope I hope you guys derive a lot from my channel, but that is one of the big things. Julie says retirement, security, a newer car for Donna. Linda says my son's wedding. That is a big one. House. Retirement, next used car, a car using cash. Hey, a lot of us have a car on there. Travel with my son, I love it. House projects, new floors, retirement, travel. Buffer and emergency fund, yes. Graduation trip for my daughter, vacations, retirement, I'm new here. Hi, Liz. Saving for retirement, big vacation while paying down 150,000 in debt. You got this. And this is this is where it all this is where it all it's going to where it's all going to happen. Liz, I'm so glad you're here. Oops, sorry. Hold on. Oh, Karen the HVAC. Yes. Semi retire in 2026. It's good to have a like a timeline. That's great. Moving out of state and a new house, Christina. How exciting. You don't want to fret over anything again. I want unexpected things to be an inconvenience, not a disaster. Yes. I, I want to blow that up. I want it to be, an because when unexpected things happen, an inconvenience, we can get over. But a disaster is a true nightmare. So I love that comment. Um, okay. I have two savings accounts. Beautiful, Kathleen. Retirement. I have applied for three different part-time jobs because I don't make enough to cover my house. Yes, Andy. Excellent. If you don't have enough to cover your household or, or save, this is great. You're like, okay, I know I've got to do this and you're doing it. Keep knocking this microphone out. I'm going to build a home studio to do voiceovers in and change the way I earn my living. Amanda, Amanda, Amanda leaves me these wonderful comments. Many of you do, but Amanda, I just, I always, I always comment on that. That's exciting. Darlene's going to increase emergency fund, saving for retirement. Oh my goodness. Wait, two more. I think I need to do. Yeah. So, you know, Cameron. Oh, you're remodeling your kitchen. Are you going to film it so I can watch it, Hope and Larry? Okay, guys, I could keep doing that, but let me keep going. I want to I want to address everybody, but I'm going to keep it going. All right. Saving is in crucial it's crucial and it's exciting. I get excited about what I'm saving for. Um while we're talking about the saving, okay, let me talk about practical tip number four. And that is take pride in your budget. I'm listening to this book right now called The 12 Week Year. Brand new, just started listening to it. And they were saying, if the CEO of any business company, any anywhere, didn't know their numbers, how's that going to work? Be the CEO of your home, okay? It's the same idea. Take control, know your numbers, and take great pride. This is a great act of self-care 
to know your budget, to know what's coming in, to assign each dollar a job. You're the CEO of your household and don't let anybody let you think differently, okay? And don't let your friends influence you on how you should be doing things. This is your house. They don't have to pay your bills. They don't have to pay your bills. You have to pay your bills. If you have a partner, this is something you need to be collective and work together on. I do not have a partner. So it's all me. I'm the CEO, baby. And I make it happen. <laughs> take charge and take pride in that budget. Getting back to diligence. What's the point of working so hard, so hard? I know you guys are working so hard and earning this money. If you're not taking care of it and using it wisely and efficiently, give each dollar their highest purpose in your life. Let them do you justice. Does that make sense, you guys? Hmm. Christina, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, <laughs> Lisa, yeah, um, all my money sucked away in a nasty divorce, working three jobs and start. It's gonna stink for a little bit, Lisa. I've been through that. Well, not, um, I've, yes, actually, I've been <laughs> through. You guys all know I've never had one job ever, um, but I'm getting there someday. It's just gonna be one job. Take great pride in your budget, okay? Hillary is not in labor yet, but she said if she was not in labor, she would be here. So Hillary, I'm so excited for you. It could be any time. And I love this. Hope says, and when you reach your goal, celebrate. Absolutely. It's exciting, you guys, this progress. Some of you have never done this before to this extent. Some of you have never had these goals that you're reaching and these like, they, there's nothing you can't do. And how do I say this? I've been through some yucky things. Going through a divorce is yucky, um, especially when you have a child that you are supporting and you want the absolute best for them, which every parent does. You've got to make some decisions and you've got to not think that it's hopeless. No matter what situation you are in right now, if your budget is tight, one of our people was just saying, they're getting another job. They're going to figure this out. Everything is figure outable. That's from Marie Forleo. Do you remember when I did that video, guys? Everything is figure outable when I talked about that. That's another good book to check out if you, uh, if you've never read it. We're going to talk about giving next because that is our third budget category. But while I start talking about giving, can you please let me know? Those of you that are budgeting this year with me, can you let me know just brief successes you've had? Maybe a success you've never had before or you know, just something brand new. Let me know in the comments, what have your successes been since we started 2023 budget class and you're on it? Let me know in the comments. I'm going to get there in a second. Let me go back to giving. You guys know I feel passionately about this topic because on a personal note, I've shared this with many of you before, when I was younger, I was always fearful that I wasn't going to have enough money. So I would hold on to it very tightly, like donating. This sounds weird. I came from Catholic school. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm from uh, like a, a, I'm surrounded by givers. But me personally, I used to feel when I was younger, like I don't have enough money to give. But you do, you, you do, even in the smallest way. Um, in Joshua Becker's book, the one that we talked about with him not too long ago. If you haven't seen that, check it out on the channel. Type in Joshua Becker. Uh, he was saying that you start off by like your first paycheck, for example, putting $5 aside. See if life goes on. Did you donate that $5? Give it to somebody that needs it more than you. And see next paycheck. 
Could you do it again? If it didn't do much, could you double it? How about $10? Could you give away $10 to someone that needs it more? And see the next paycheck. Did your life go on? Did you keep going? Did you suffer? Did you really suffer? I don't know. But in general, you'll probably find that you are able to give a little. And the reason I say give, first of all, other people need it. But second of all, you will hold on to your money a little looser and it will make room for more to come in. I swear that is how I feel about it. If I had held on tightly like that forever, I feel like I would not be as generous as I am now. Um, when things go on in our community, we had a family who just lost, uh, uh, one of our community members passed away unexpectedly in his forties, just passed away in his sleep. And the community has really rallied behind his wife and his children and everyone that could donate donated. And I didn't think about it even like for a split second, like, is it in the budget? Am I going to, I knew, I knew immediately. And that's why this is the giving budget. I'm going to give them something. Somebody in your community needs it. If you've got it or you can try to get it, try to give it's, 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 it's life changing in your giving budget will be charities, donations. There's GoFundMe pages going on all the time for disasters that people are going through. If someone's in your community and you're able to contribute, do it. Tithing, if you are a tither, that's usually um, tithing, I believe is literally 10%. Um, but some people don't follow that, but that's a thing that you'd put in your giving category if you do. I include birthdays, anniversaries, shower gifts, events, anything where I'm giving presents. And I wrote gifting of any kind. That's what I put in my giving. Okay, let me come back. Let's let's take a little success break here. Oh, I don't even know where I left off. I apologize. Okay, let's see. One payment away from paying off the car. Yes. 200 away from completely debt free. I want to do a debt free scream for you, but I don't want to be obnoxious, but I do want to scream 60 years old and never been debt free. Julie, that's so exciting. <laughs> Woohoo, Linda. Most successful low spend January to date. That's a big deal when you realize you have the power to save more money than you ever have in a no spend and you did it. Yes, Sue, both, she did dual. Adriana, as a single mom, I was able to buy a less fortunate pregnant single mom of two, a brand new stroller and car seat. That is beautiful. That is kind. That is generous. And that's what it's all about, guys. Helping each other. We're all going to have seasons of ick. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to be up here all the time. We're not going to be down here all the time in the dumps, financially stressed. And we're not going to be on top of the world all the time. It's going to ebb and flow. Candace reduced her monthly food budget, probably by looking at your budget, knowing everything, you know, I mean, the food we know it's all gone up and, and um, a lot of people are working on that, which I'm very proud of you, Candace. Good job. Matthew, I'm trying to get rid of fear. I won't have enough for retirement. So Matthew, that is a very common fear. Um, and us taking the steps to get in that good position uh, I've told you guys, I didn't start doing anything retirement, nothing, zero contributing for my retirement until my late 30s. And it's the biggest kick in the booty that I ever, like if I could go back in time, Rosie, I always say, if you're on here, start early, you guys. And if you didn't do it early, do it tomorrow. You know what I mean? Do it today. Getting organized, hi, four day homestead. Getting organized and caught up on bills since I've started the budget class. Yes. 
saving an extra $300 since starting in February. Good job. Judy is reminding us donations can be written off uh, do your taxes for your taxes. So it's a win-win. That is true. I do donate more now because of your videos. Yay. I bet those people are thrilled. Yes. Prosperity principle. Giving caused getting. It's, 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 it comes around you guys. It really does. My success is taking my, I could cry right now. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm like very excited. My success is taking my budget seriously. I check it all the time to make sure I'm on target. Also set up more donations. Way to go, Lou. Able to save because I budgeted. Transferred budget to blank monthly calendar so it was easy to see what I could spend per week. Great. The more I give, the more I want to give. Donna, I hear this so clearly and loudly. I feel the same way. And again, like I know Dave Ramsey, like his thing is to, uh, to live like no one else. So you can live like no one else. But the last thing about that is to live and give like you never have before. And this is a huge motivation of this channel. I want to give as much as I can. I love your way of giving. Dame Rams with Temper is crazy. I cannot give. Yeah. So it's like you got to make what works for you. Right, Katya? Oh, Sue. I lost everything in a flood in 1996. If it wasn't for the generosity of others, I don't know if I would have made it. You are a perfect example. They People pitched in in your community to make you have what you need. My parents had a fire and um, lost a lot of their belongings and their um, their community riled a lot of, why can't I speak? Their community all pitched in and it was like the most, they held a, I get emotional about that. They held a dance uh, or like a fundraiser for my parents, like to, to replace the things that they lost in the fire. It was really beautiful. Um, <clears throat> extravagant gen generosity. It's not the amount, it's the spirit. And that is what I hope you guys all get into it. The spirit of it. And the more you have, the more you'll give later. And it's just, it's a matter of time. You're all on the right track. You're doing it. We're doing this. Okay, moving on to another tip that is very important. Reduce your debt. This is so like serious to me because when I remember, <laughs> if you've been watching my channel since 2019, I was able to pay off my car in full. I leased it. Don't recommend. It was a terrible mistake. And then I had to work like crazy to get rid of it because it was driving me insane. I don't want to have any debt. If you add up your debts, just add up your debts alone, all your, all your debts, your car payment. Don't worry about your house right now. Like your house is a, it's its own beast, but all the other things. And think about if you could put that money back into your budget, think about how much more you could give. Think about how much more you could save. Think about uh, just how much more you could contribute to the life that you want to live if you didn't have that hanging over your head. Try to make it a policy going forward that you're not going to borrow any more money unless it's absolutely dire. But um, reduce your debt, eventually eliminate. Um, know what you owe and use your budget to pay it down with the plan that you're making. This is a plan. This is a plan that we are executing every single month. And by doing the unique monthly budget, <clears throat> this is going to make everything move a little faster because you know what's coming in, you know where you want it to go, and you're sending it there. And then you are tracking it. You are tracking it. Me and Linda were talking about this before. I was talking about that, 
that book too. Um, what gets measured gets managed. If you don't know, if you're not tracking, you're not measuring how much you're saving, you don't know, you know? Oop. So tip number six, especially if you're on a super tight budget and by the way, it's one of the topics of tomorrow's video. Focus on your needs only for a bit. I am pretty sure that you mostly have the basics of what you need probably. And we can get carried away with the lifestyle piece, which is what we're about to jump into. The last category, lifestyle. Focus on your needs. When you are concerned with your basic costs of living, get back to your basics and focus on those. It doesn't always have to be all the extra stuff. There's seasons. There's seasons of great need. There's seasons of complete abundance. And just be where you are right now. Make the plan. Execute the plan. And we're going to make some progress. The last category is lifestyle. I always call this the icing on the cake. These are your choices. These are what you select for your for, for whatever you want. This is the whatever you want category, okay? One of the things that I like to do with this money is um, I like to go out to eat. That's one of my favorite like treat things, going out with friends for, for food. Oh, man. As I've gotten older, and ju even just more recently, I've realized the importance of quality food sometimes, you guys. Over the last year, I've really started eating more whole foods and less processed foods, and it's a, it's a real game changer. By the way, going out to eat is one of the things that I like to do. You could put like a miscellaneous. I usually have like Kate and Kaden. If Kaden goes to like... Um, Let's just say he wants to go to a trampoline park or he wants to go um, to the movies or something like that. That would be like in that kind of category. Entertainment, hobbies. Don't forget home decor. Because home decor is probably not necessary unless you really don't have anything yet. You know what I mean? Home decor is usually a choice. Which gets me to number seven, as far as our tips. This is the final tip. We're not done yet, but this is the final tip. And this one is something to really chew on. Contentment. I say contentment is key. When you look at the people and the things in your life that you do have, revel in being content with all that you have. Say it out loud or just in your head. But each day, I, I told you guys for a while, I did this like experiment where every morning I woke up and before I did anything else, I would either say out loud or in my head, I have everything I need. Is that true? Technically, yes. Does that include all my desires and my goals and everything? You know, not yet. It's coming. But I have everything I need. I've got a roof over my head. I've got food on the table. I've got some clothes on. I've got my family. That's all I need. We've got our health. Knock on wood. Linda says, I'm honestly content. Carla says, contentment is key. Awesome. Contentment. I have everything I need. Try it tomorrow. And I'm sorry if you think that's cheesy. Just when your eyes open, think of me. <laughs> Think of Kate when you wake up tomorrow and say, I have everything I need. I have everything I need. Because you do have everything you need. And all the rest is wonderful frosting. And if you like frosting on the cake, that's all it is, you know? Well, hello, so much, Mrs. So Much More. First time I've caught a live. I enjoy your videos. Thank you. I'm so glad you're here. P 
please, while we are coming, we're not done yet, but while we're, while we're getting to the end here, please leave any questions you have. I always say I want to leave time for questions and answer questions and answer. And then I always feel like we, we don't have time. So please leave some questions. If you have some questions, Now I won't be able not to think of Kate. <laughs> Betty, I love it. I constantly count my blessings because I'm living in anxiety. Then it will hinder me on my financial journey. Anxiety is very real. And a lot of people experience anxiety around their finances. I truly believe, and not just because I'm doing this class with you, but I truly believe as a single mom, as, you know, a, a passionate woman in this world, trying to make things happen, trying to help people, I truly feel like the budget, creating this budget, executing the budget has been my biggest anxiety reducer in my financial life, hands down, the biggest and best tool to reduce anxiety. There is not really a time where, when I started budgeting, there was definitely a time where I'd be like, do I have the money for that? Uh, or how can I have the money for that? Like, and that, that's the question I ask more these days, but there isn't really a time where I'm wondering, do I have it? I know if I have it. People start mentioning things. I can see it a mile away. I know if I have it or if I don't. And I think that that is a beautiful thing about budgeting. You're not living in that, that anxiety. Like if I go buy that right now, am I going to have no money left in my account? You will know. You will know, and that will not be an anxiety. You run your card and you wonder if it's going to go through. You're not going to have that anymore. That's not going to happen. We've got this. Cam, same. Same. You know, okay, so Darlene says, what do you think of home warranties? Are they worth it? You know what? I hate this question. <laughs> I love you, Darlene, but I hate this question because this is a question that I struggle with with things uh, kind of often. Let us know in the comments, guys, what do you think about warranties? There are sometimes I think warranties are great, and then there are some times where I think it's a complete waste of money. So it's it's kind of, it really it really depends on the situation and what your priorities are and what is most important. <clears throat> Ooh. Hey Amira, I see you lurking. Good to see you. Hi Kate, thanks for all your information and helpful videos. Thank you. My goodness, Miles for smiles, you do have the best smile. Look at you. I love that smile, it makes me smile. Oh, I love this question. <clears throat> Under the Median says, what is your best advice on knowing when it's time to increase or decrease a budget category? This is a great question. Uh, let's talk about groceries, for example. So my groceries used to be $75 to $80 a week. Remember those days? I don't, I almost don't remember them, but I did. And so with inflation and with my growing boy and with my three cats that I chose, um, you, you'll realize like, okay, say, I would say like two or three months in a row, you have an expectation. Like you're going to spend I hate even throwing a number out. <laughs> so back in the day, my grocery, my groceries were like three to four hundred dollars a month. Can you imagine? I mean, I don't know what your budget is now, but there got to a point where I'm like, well, that's it's absolutely not feasible anymore. 
So what I had to do was I had to look where I could reduce in other categories uh, and increase that. So if you set an expectation of a budget category and you are consistently not hitting it, don't think you're a failure. Sometimes things need to get a little bit increased. And that's just the way it is. So don't be unapologetic. You don't want to be wasteful and you don't want to like blow it up over the top. But if you're consistently not hitting that that, and you're trying, it might be time to increase it. Oh, look at that. I am not a supporter of home warranties. I don't do warranties. Warranties have been a waste. I forget about them most of the time. This seems to be the consensus. Don't get the warranty. <laughs> no warranty. Save the money for warranty issues like replacing appliances, etc. I have had a home warranty for 15 years. Hate it, but the husband thinks it's worth it. It constantly increases. And they always find a loophole not to pay. Not worth it. Oh my goodness, Lisa. Thank you for sharing that with us. How to budget the fun money. Okay, so for me, what I do is I do the household first. I make sure I've got the household covered. I do savings next. I do giving right after that. And then I do the fun money. So that's the order. I do essentials, hit the savings goals, make sure to give somewhere. And then what do I, what have I got? What have I got for fun? Hey, Tina, you must be joining us. Oh, a thumbs up. Thank you. All right. We're, we're about to get to the end. I'm just going to invite Linda back in. And I also want to thank her. Hopefully Linda is ready for me. Hi, Linda. I'm ready. I'm You're ready. ready. <laughs> hey, I just posted something. I know this is like the business side, but I just posted um, something in the chat about a 90 day no payment uh, offer that town and country is doing for um, new purchases or refinances of auto loans from other financial institutions. So that's if you need a car and a lot of people mentioned they were thinking about buying a car, shopping for a car, um, take advantage of that. It's a good we've, we've seen a lot of people have taken that 90 days and jump started a, an emergency fund if they didn't have one. You don't have to do it, but if you want to, because you've got something else coming up or you want to pad your emergency fund a little bit, it's um, it's a nice uh, it's a nice offer. Thank but you for yeah, so you could check it out at tcfcu.com. But this Thank is great. You. I mean, you know, I really think a lot of, you know, breaking it down. It's, I think the beauty of doing the six six part, six month long um, budget deep dive is that you can really have a chance to to dig deep into thinking around all the different things that go into thinking about a budget and there's a lot to it and hopefully it just be, just continues to become more and more natural and just part of what we do to live our lives and reach our goals that that is my my biggest hope that we can do that and i love that we have this opportunity to do this for six times because Sometimes we don't get it on the first try. I didn't get it on my first try. Oh my goodness, you guys. No. It took me three months just to get into the habit for sure. Like three months to like start to understand it. And then after six, I would say I was getting it onto a roll. But honestly, the way I budgeted when I first started and then a year later, I've learned all these things and it's just been uh, my budget. I laugh now when I look at how I used to set it up even. Mm -hmm. I, I, this one makes most sense to me. And again, guys, if it doesn't make sense to you quite the way you want, please just adjust it to the way that does make sense so that you can be successful. But I love having the essentials in the same spot. So I know 
no matter what happens, this is what I need. And then I can build around it. Um, so guys, thank you so much town and country. Thank you so much for having me. Just one, just, we should add that the number, the next session, the fourth session, which will be a 30 minute session is on Wednesday, March 29th. So we can dig into, uh, tweaking April. So we'll, we'll have, yes. Okay. So then now we're that posted, um, or shared with everyone who's participated here and share it with town and country's members. And I'm sure you'll share it with the K squad. Absolutely. That's great. So guys, and that's just, uh, as it said in the description, illustrative that illustrative of the fact that the more we do it, the easier it gets over time. You're not going to spend a ton of time on this once you get rolling, but I'm glad we've had these hours once a month and then 30 minutes for the next three months. And we're just, we're on a roll. So guys, thank you so much. Thank you, town and country. And thank you everyone for being here. I hope to see you all every Friday, of course, for frugal Friday. And then March 29th, Wednesday at 630, same time for part four. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thanks, everybody.